Prim Composer has the ability to limit the size of the prims that you create. So for example, inside of Second Life, uh, prims have a maximum size of 10 meters. So you can set that in Prim Composer and any prims that you create will be constrained to that size. You can also increase the size for different, a different target environment such as OpenSim. In this video, I'll discuss briefly how you can set the prim limits and how you can turn them on and off. So let's begin by going to the Prim Composer Preferences dialog and we want the uh, Prim Default uh, page here. And you can see at the top here we have Prim Size. You can set the minimum Prim Size, the maximum Prim Size, and the default Prim Size which is what's created when you first click uh, to create a, a Prim in the scene. So by default it's 10 meters which is the same as uh, Second Life. But uh, for this video it's uh, 10 meters is a little dif difficult to work with so I'm going to set it at 2 meters. And this will just demonstrate how you can change this yourself. You could also increase the size of this. If you were using OpenSim you might want to make this uh, 100 meters. Um, in any event, you would, however you set this, uh, there's still no way to get around the maximum limit of the target environment. So if you're doing it, exporting to Second Life, it, it doesn't matter what you set here, uh, you're still going to be limited to 10 meters in size. But let's demonstrate how, how this works with a maximum of 2 meters. So we'll just save this. We get a dialog here that says if anything in Prim defaults was changed, then you must restart 3ds Max. This was Prim defaults, uh, so we're going to click OK and then we're going to restart 3ds Max. Okay, so I've restarted 3ds Max, and now let's take a look at how this works. Let's uh, go to the Prim Composer menu under the Create panel and we'll just create a box. Now if we look at uh, over here on the Properties panel, we have uh, Size in Meters and we have a button here that says View Change. So if we click this, we can see that the size of this box is one meter by one meter by one meter. Well, that's actually not right. There's a, a small bug. Uh, if you look at the size of it, uh, it's actually uh, this grid is uh, one meter to one meter grid. So the box is actually 0.5 uh, by 0.5 by 0.5. Uh, this bug only occurs when you create it. Uh, you can just toggle this limits button and now you see the correct size. So you can modify the size of a prim either through this size dialog. Uh, so for example we can modify the X and you notice that as I move X up when it hits 2 meters it stops. And that's because I just previously in this video set the maximum size to 2 meters. And that applies for all four dimensions. You can also manipulate uh, these values using the normal scale gizmo. So for example we could grab the Z here and you can see the meter uh, the size box here and if we raise this up then you can see that it got limited to two meters. I'll just pull it up again and you see it bounces back to two meters. So it's limiting also the size that the prim can be uh, when we're modifying it with the scale gizmo we just slide this over now we're on the grid and you can see there's one meter two meters 
Okay, so this is great, but uh, there's sometimes when uh, you might not want this to happen. Uh, there is some overhead associated uh, with this functionality, and it's there pretty much all the time. So if you're just editing a prim, and you you're not really resizing it, it's not anywhere near the limit, or it's or size really isn't important at this particular time. Uh, you can turn off uh, the the size uh, limit functionality using this checkbox inside of the dialog here. Uh, let's let's do that now. Let's first um, let's resize it so that the Z is at the maximum size of two meters. Now let's uh, turn off the size limits. You notice that the box here uh, disables so you can't change the size of the prim using this box uh, when the limits are disabled but you can still change it using the uh, scale gizmo and let's watch what happens now it's already this the size of this box is already two meters tall so normally we would not be able to make it any larger but uh, with limits disabled, if we scale it up, it just keeps scaling. So that's because the the limits have been turned off. If we turn the limits back on and then we scale it again, boom, you see it pops back down to two meters in size. So you can turn this on and off. Uh, primarily, you want to leave it on, but if you're having performance problems, and particularly when you're editing sculpties, uh, adding modifiers to them and that sort of thing, you might want to turn it off while you're doing that work inside of the sculpty. And then when you're getting ready to finalize the scene, you might want to turn it back on so that you can uh, make sure that your sizes are all within the valid ranges. There's one other place that you can do this. In addition to this checkbox here, there's also, if you go up to the Prim Composer menu, there's a Size Limits checkbox in that menu as well. And when you toggle one of them, the other one toggles as well. So if I toggle this off, you see that now Size Limits are turned off. And then you go to this dialog, you see Size Limits are also turned off here. So that's just good to know. And at any time, you can always uh, come back uh, to Preferences, and under Prim Defaults, uh, you can change the maximum size. And uh, this could be useful also, for example, if you wanted to, if you were working at a very small scale, and you knew that you didn't want any of your objects to be greater than a meter, then uh, you could set this at one meter. Or if you're working at a very big scale, uh, you can also set the minimum size. So I can set the minimum size to say one meter. So it, it can't be any smaller than a meter. And if you're trying to work within a certain range of sizes, this could be useful as well. There's one other thing that I want to show you about uh, size limits. Uh, and that is that it works with multiple prims as well. So let's create uh, some other objects here. We can create a sphere. Let's put a sculpt map in here. Um, let's use a sculpt shape. We'll make a cylinder sculpt shape. Uh, we can uh, put a torus in here. And so we have several prims now. Uh, and they're at different sizes. Let's, uh, whoops. Let's, uh, you can right click to uh, stop to cancel the creator. Uh, so let's let's now uh, make these some different sizes. So I'll just scale this a little bit and uh, I'll scale this down, make this smaller and uh, well that's probably pretty good. Now let's select all of these and 
let's try to uh, we could also group them that might actually be easier so let's say that we want this to be a link set so we'll group them all together and uh, now let's say we want to try to uh, scale this up well this box is already has its maximum Z of two meters so if we try to scale the group they all bounce back to the smallest size now we can size them down as well and you notice here we get to a point oh no we're not quite there yet there we go so we've gotten to a point now where we can't scale it down anymore but you notice these are different sizes if we ungroup them and we look at the smallest object we can see that the smallest object size is at 0.01 if we look at the the box uh, well some of its dimensions are also at 0.01 so the point is that the the whole group is limited by the smallest or largest object in any dimension of the group so we're scaling it up now. You notice we've hit we've hit a wall there where we can't scale it up anymore. And if we look at this, we can see that the Z has hit two meters on that box. Everything else can still scale up individually, but if you're working with the group, it gets limited by the size of this box. So that's just in incredibly useful. I mean, that's a feature that we're accustomed to inside of uh, the Second Life viewer, and uh, it's also present inside of Prim Composer for 3ds Max. And finally, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. If we uh, go up to Prim Composer Preferences under Miscellaneous Preferences. There's a checkbox here, Enable the Prim Change Handler that limits the size of prims. If you turn this off and then save it, then now that's your default setting. So if I restart 3ds Max, uh, the limits will be turned off when 3ds Max restarts. So that can be useful if, if your normal mode is to not use limits. Uh, then you probably want to turn it off in the in the preferences. You can still at any time turn it back on uh, using the two methods that I described previously.